Alright, welcome to my reading of the Epic of Gilgamesh. We are currently reading Tablet 1. Gilgamesh, king of the city-state of Uruk. Ninsan, a goddess, his mother. Ankadi, a friend and companion. Shamhat, a prostitute of Uruk. I am reading in the wrong place. This is actually not the uh, beginning of the tablet. This is a list of characters. But you know, a list of characters is useful, even though I don't think it was on the tablet. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Shamhat, a prostitute of a rook. Shamhash, the sun god. Humbaba, the guardian of the forest of cedar. Ishtar, the principal goddess of a rook. Shinuri, Sh Shiduri, a minor goddess of wisdom. Urshanabi, the ferryman of Utnapishti. Utnapishti, survivor of the flood. Utnapishti comes in at the end. He's, uh, he's Noah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, that's a hint. All right. Tablet one. The standard version of the Babylonian Gilgamesh epic. He who saw the deep. Tablet one. Coming of Ankadu. All right, and there's a summary. I will summarize the coming of Ankadu to you. Prologue. King Gilgamesh tyrannizes the people of Uruk, who complain to the gods. To divert his superhuman energies, the gods create his counterpart, the wild man Ankadu, the wild man Ankadu, who is brought up by the animals of the wild. Ankadu is spotted by a trapper who lures him away from the herd with a prostitute, Shamhash, Shamhat, the prostitute. Then the prostitute shows him her arts and proposes to take him to Uruk, where Gilgamesh has been seeing him in dreams. It begins. He who saw the deep, the country's foundation, who knew dot dot dot, was wise in all matters. The dot 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 is an ellipsis because there's a break in the tablet. We don't actually know the word that they were using. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> That's how old this thing I'm reading is to you, is that there's, we don't actually have a complete version. And the, the author actually inserts in parentheses words that we don't have a complete version, but his scholarly attitude is pretty sure the word is there. Um, if you were reading that, you would get all that, but it doesn't really matter for the story. I'm just, I'm reading you a story. Sometimes it just breaks off like a dream. Think about it like a dream. You know how there's parts of dreams that just sort of like ellipse, and then you're like, oh, what happened next? And, but you can just sort of string it all together, make meaning out of it. That's, this story doesn't really have a narr like a really strong narrative arc anyhow. Like, really you should think about it more as if you were dreaming. And this was your, the dream of a lifetime. <laughs> okay, I'll keep going. He who saw the deep, the country's foundation, who knew, who was wise in all matters. Gilgamesh who saw the deep, the country's foundation, who knew, was wise in all matters. He, everywhere, and learnt of everything, the sum of wisdom. He saw what was secret, discovered what was hidden. He brought back a tale of before the deluge, before the beginning of time. He brought back a tale. <laughs> The deluge is sort of synonymous with a, a beginning of modern time. We'll get to that. He came a far road, was weary, found peace, and he set all his labors on a tablet of stone. He built the rampart of Uruk the sheepfold, of holy Enana the sacred storehouse. So... Gilgamesh, here we see that Gilgamesh is one of a pantheon of famous city builders, gods. So, Uruk built the rampart. He, Gilgamesh built the rampart of Uruk the sheepfold. So, Uruk is the city that he's the king of, and he built the city. So, there's, uh, you know, Romulus and Remus, famous city founders. There's also Marduk, who famously founded Babylon. So, this is a common... Uh, thing in, in ancient, ancient cultures. You see, you see this all over the world in India and in China and Greece and that there's this, this famous founder god king uh, who, who's responsible for the beginning of civilization. 
uh, and he he brought back a tale from before the deluge. So he he's a, a figure that links ancient time to modern time. Uh, so that's it's a good figure to have, I think. <laughs> See its wall like a strand of wool. I wonder what that means. View its parapet that none could copy. Take the stairway of a bygone era. Draw near to a Nana, seat of Ishtar, the goddess, that no later king could ever copy. So, the teller of this story is aware that his story is about a bygone era, even as he's telling it, right? And so we think that this whole thing is a bygone era, but you have to keep in mind the scope of this is that it's told as if it's ancient history already. So that's pretty cool, <laughs> the time scope that we're talking about. So it's a story from 2500 BC, but it's talking about even earlier history, mythic history from much earlier. So climb a rook's wall with me, storyteller. Climb a rook's wall and walk back and forth. Survey its foundations, examine the brickwork. Were its bricks not fired in an oven? Did the seven sages not lay its foundations? A square mile is the city, a square mile a date grove, a square mile is a clay pit, half a square mile the temple of Ishtar, three square miles and a half is a rook's expanse. <laughs> That's such a tiny city, <laughs> but this was like the biggest city ever. <laughs> Long time ago, <laughs> city made out of clay, three square miles. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> See the tablet box of cedar, release its clasp of bronze, lift the lid of its secret, pick up the lapis lazuli, and read out the travails of Gilgamesh and all that he went through. Oh my god, this is so cool! <laughs> so you can imagine that in, in ancient Uruk, there was a tablet box of cedar with a clasp of bronze, and inside this tablet box of cedar laid tablets of lapis lazuli. This is glowing rock, and carved into this lapis lazuli was this story, <laughs> the story that I'm reading to you right now. <laughs> I'm reading it to you on a computer, on a glowing crystal LCD screen. Uh, but, you know, four and a half thousand years ago, they were reading it on glowing lapis lazuli tablets. <laughs> okay? Sound good? Sounds great. Great. Cool. <laughs> Also, I just realized that my, my dates for this might be totally wrong. I mean, like, don't... Plus or minus a thousand years. But again, deep history. <laughs> Surpassing all other kings, heroic in stature, brave scion of Uruk, wild bull on the rampage, going at the fore, he was the vanguard, going at the rear, one of his comrades could trust. A mighty bank protecting his warriors, a violent flood wave smashing a stone wall. Wild bull Lugalbanda, Gilgamesh, the perfect in strength, suckling of the August wild cow, the goddess Ninsan. Ninsan. Gilgamesh the tall, magnificent and terrible, who opened passes in the mountains, who dug wells on the slopes of the uplands, and crossed the ocean, the wide sea, to the sunrise, who scoured the world, ever searching for life, and reached through sheer force Utnapishti the distant. Now they're summarizing the story for you if you didn't get that who restored the cult centers and destroyed by the deluge. Right? The dealers destroyed the world, and then Gilgamesh rebuilt it. And who set place for the people the rights of the cosmos. Oh, Gilgamesh didn't rebuild it. Utapishti rebuilt it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting confused and excited. Hmm. Alright, I'm actually gonna... This video is 9 minutes and 30 seconds long. I think I'm gonna try to keep all of the videos under 10 minutes. So I'm going to keep reading, so if you want, just, just click the next one. I'm going to upload them all now, uh, but just so that you can, like, break. You know, ten minutes is a long time to watch a video, so this coffee break, I'll keep going.